I'm Dr. Curtis Cornish, and I would like to talk to you about the effect of catecholamines in the cardiovascular system. Catecholamines are derived from the amino acid tyrosine. The most abundant catecholamines in the body are norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine. As we think about their effects on the cardiovascular system, um, we look at the receptors that they bind to. Now we're going to be talking mainly about epinephrine and norepinephrine. So in the vasculature we have alpha receptors and these cause vasoconstriction of both the arteries and the veins. If you have trouble th remembering beta 1 and beta 2, just think that the heart was the first thing that was identified or looked at and so those are where the beta 1 receptors are. And the next were the vascular receptors and so we have beta 2 receptors there. So as we're looking at epinephrine, it's both a beta and an alpha agonist, but it has much greater beta effect than alpha effect. Norepinephrine, on the other hand, is a much greater alpha agonist, but it does have beta 1 and beta 2 effects as well. In order to study these, some pharmacological compounds have been derived. One of them is isopaternol, which is purely beta 1 and beta 2, and phenylephrine, which is only alpha, so we can look at these responses independently. The coronary vasculature is interesting in that it is not uh, uniform in the way that the receptors are distributed. So in the large con conduit arteries, there are more alpha receptors, and you can think of that as making these vessels stiffer so that pressure is transmitted more uh, uniformly and more rapidly down. The resistance vessels have five times more beta receptors than alpha receptors. This means that both norepinephrine and epinephrine will cause an increase in coronary blood flow because they cause dilation of the coronary resistance vessels. We're going to be looking at recordings that were take, taken from conscious dogs. Now these dogs were surgically inter instrumented and allowed uh, several weeks to recover, and they were trained to lie quietly on a table. And so what look, we're looking at is classically has been referred to as strip charts, and that merely looks at an event over time. So as we look at the channels, the first channel is left ventricular DPDT. Now not shown here is left ventricular pressure, which was recorded from a very high fidelity catheter that was ra inserted right into the left ventricle. Aortic pressure, again, recorded from a catheter in the descending aorta. Heart rate, which was taken off of the uh, pressure pulse for the left ventricular pressure. Cardiac output taken from a flow probe around the aorta. Coronary flow was taken from a flow probe that was placed around the circumflex coronary artery. Total peripheral resistance is a calculated value. And left atrial pressure was recorded from a catheter in the left atrium. So as we look at the effects of isopaternol, the first thing we see is that there's a very dramatic increase in DPDT. And whenever we see that, we can say that there's an increase in contractility. Looking at the aortic pressure, classically we see a drop in diastolic pressure and very little change in systolic pressure. The reason that the systolic pressure stays about the same is because we have an increase in pulse pressure. And that increase in pulse pressure is due to an increase in stroke volume associated with the increase in contractility. And we'll talk about them more specifically. We have an increase in heart rate, and that's a beta-1 effect. We have an increase in cardiac output, and we'll talk about what causes that, but is the result of increased contractility in heart rate and decreased afterload. Coronary flow goes up, as we mentioned. And that's because of the direct vasodilation of the beta-2 receptors in the coronary vasculature. Total peripheral resistance is going down because we have dilation of the resistance vessels on the arterial side. We also have a decrease in left atrial pressure. And that de decrease in left atrial pressure is a result of dilation of the capacitance vascular bed or the large veins. Now as we look at pressure volume loops, and I think it's necessary to do that in order to understand what's going on. 
First of all, the blue loop is the control. The green is the isopaternal. We saw left atrial pressure goes down, and that's a drop in preload. We saw the arterial pressure going down. So this is after load starting here and ending here. And so this is our afterload with the isobaternal, and so that's gone down. An increase in afterload decreases stroke volume. We also have an increase in contractility, and that's represented by this line, showing that contractility has increased. So overall, our stroke volume has increased. Now I find it interesting to think, to look at these independently. If we had our frank starting curve like this, and this is our preload, then dropping the preload would shift us down that curve and theoretically would decrease our stroke volume. The decrease in afterload, however, also uh, causes an increase in stroke volume. And so it would appear here that the afterload has a greater effect, but this is also combined with the increase in contractility. And we'll be looking at some of these later on. We're now going to look at phenylephrine, and remember that phenylephrine is an alpha agonist, and it acts on receptors only in the vasculature. So not surprising that we don't see a change in DPDT, no change in contractility. Here we're seeing that our diastolic pressure is going up a little bit, systolic pressure is going up, but you'll notice that the heart rate is going down, and that's very receptive reflex. You look at left atrial pressure and you see that it's gradually increasing because we're constricting the capacitance system and moving more blood centrally. Interestingly, we have an increase in coronary flow. Now there are alpha receptors in the coronary vasculature and they should be causing increased resistance. However, the coronary vasculature is very much dominated by autoregulation and so the, what's happening here is this is increase in pressure work is causing autoregulation of the coronary vasculature. Cardiac is output is going down because we have a decrease in the heart rate, and we also have had an increase in afterload, which is going to decrease the cardiac output. And we'll look at that in just a minute. Again, here's a higher dose of phenylephrine. We didn't have a coronary flow on this dog, so no change in DPDT. You can see there's a greater increase in systolic and diastolic pressures. Left atrial pressure again is going up. Cardiac output has gone down, and we'll discuss that in a minute. But also heart rate has gone down much more because of the higher dose. Very strong reflex response. <coughs> So looking at the effects of phenylephrine on stroke volume, we start off here with our preload, and we have venoconstriction, which moves blood centrally and increases the preload. We have our afterload, which you can see is shifts up considerably. And so the afterload is going to decrease the stroke volume. Again, looking at the frank starting mechanism, that would say we're shifting up that frank starting curve, and that should be increasing cardiac output. Again, the afterload seems to have a greater effect, and we have no change in contractility. If we did, we'd have a shift in that line like that. Let's now look at the more pharma physiologic condition where we have epinephrine. And this is a small dose of epinephrine very small. We see that, again, cardiac uh, contractility has gone up, diastolic pressure has gone down, systolic pressure is staying about the same. So this looks very much like we saw with the isopaternal. Heart rate has gone up. We have an increase in cardiac output because we have an increase in stroke volume and increase in heart rate. Coronary flow is going up, and here is the direct effect of the beta-2 agonist on the coronary vasculature. And we see here that left atrial pressure is probably going down a little bit, and this instance doesn't seem to change much. We would expect it to go down because we have dilation of the 
venous capacitance system. And total periphery resistance has gone down because of the dilation of the arterial resistance vasculature. Looking at norepinephrine. Now to begin with, let me just tell you that if I gave a high dose of epinephrine, it would look exactly like this. So again, DPDT, very rapid increase in DPDT. We have increase in systolic and diastolic pressures. Again, this would suggest that we have an increase in stroke volume. We have a decrease in heart rate. Now the beta-1 agonistic effect of norepinephrine should be increasing heart rate, but we have a very pronounced baroreceptor reflex that's overriding that increase in heart rate. Cardiac output's going down, again associated with the decrease in heart rate because cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. Coronary flow has gone up dramatically because of the beta-2 effects of norepinephrine on the resistance vessels of the coronary vasculature. Left atrial pressure has gone up. Again, alpha effect on the capacitance system on the venous side. And total periphery resistance, again going up because of the alpha effect on the vasculature. Looking then at the stroke volume, again this is our control. So here's our control stroke volume. We give the norepinephrine and preload went up. Again, venous capacitance is constricting. Our afterload has shifted up. Again, because of the constriction of the arterial resistance vessels. We also have an increase in contractility. And that's going to increase the stroke volume. So as you look at our stroke volume afterwards, as before, we find that stroke volume has gone up. Now if we add the actual data from that last tracing, we'd probably find the stroke volume would have gone up even more. I hope that this uh, tutorial will have been of value to you in looking at the effects of, cardio of catecholamines in the cardiovascular system. I also hope that you'd understand from this that when you look at the conscious intact, intact animal that you have to deal with baroreceptor reflex mechanisms uh, very often competing with those of catecholamines.